guys. Okay, so we have the question. We've just we've built our aquaponic system. We've cycled it, and we're going. How many fish can I put in my aquaponic system? And I know you're wanting a 10, 20, 50, 100 kind of answer. But the reality is that will actually depend on your filtration. There are a couple of more complicated ways of working out how many fish you can have within your aquaponic system. But the best way is to actually base it on the amount of filtration that you have. Okay, so that means how big is your grow bed? <laughs> Almost completely forgot to tell you. So most of the time people use the expanded clay. And the reason we're using expanded clay is that it's incredibly porous. So it's got lots and lots of holes in it, lots and lots of space for the bacteria to live. Okay, so it's really, really light, like super duper light and porous. So it's got lots of high surface area. Whereas your gravel, one, it's very heavy because it's solid. It's not porous. So while we can still hold bacteria on the outside and we'll get lots and lots of bacteria there it's not going to be anywhere near as much bacteria as what we'll get on the expanded clay so if you're wanting to, if you're sitting there going oh my god the candy the expanded clay is so expensive and the gravel is really cheap and make sure that you do your vinegar testing to see if there's anything wrong with your gravel sometimes they have high amounts of carbonates in them so it's going to increase your ph it's really dodgy um, but that's actually this gravel, that's what it will do, it increases pH. Um, Big OK Candy Expanded Clay is super expensive, which it is. Whereas gravel is really cheap, which, which it is. And just say you found some... Um, <laughs> some little gravel that's quite cheap. Now this is a different type of gravel, this is river pebbles that I got from my landscaper. And I did my the pH testing on it and it was pH neutral. So I buy my expanded clay second hand where I can and I got this. Now this or a whole heap of these small ones will have more surface area than the big ones. Okay so the smaller your pebbles the more surface area they'll have. So if you have to go with the gravel then go with the smaller ones versus the bigger ones. Okay so that can go back into my drainage gravel that's all over the place. And this is actually from my, my aquaponic system. Lots and lots of surface area, less but still more surface area than the other one. And that's what we need to be aware of when we're looking at what gravel to get. How much surface area is there on it? Okay, so that's the expanded clay is the best one for those reasons. But sometimes we can't get it. There are different gravels, different rocks you can use. Test them with the pH, with the test for the pH changes with vinegar. It's the best way of doing it, and I've got some videos to show you how to do that as well. Okay. Long story short, how big is your grow bed? Your grow bed is where your bacteria live. So if you remember through the cycling process, you're cultivating and colonizing that bacteria that is everywhere within nature. We're putting it within our aquaponic system, within our grow beds, or our coldness one bio ball sump based filter but predominantly most people do do it with the grow beds with the expanded clay or the um, different forms of gravel so we need to know how much bacteria we've actually got in there and we can then work out how much back by relation of how much bacteria we have how many fish that amount of bacteria can handle okay so that's the, the capacity how many we can have that's the ratio so we need to work out how big our grow bed is what how big how big our grow bed is but basically it's how much bacteria do we have within our aquaponic system now sometimes we use different things for our for our, um, our grow beds we could be using a bathtub for instance which does not give us you know those straight angles in which to calculate so you, you have to approximate with that and I'll give you an example of that but always go for the smaller value rather than the bigger ones okay it's better to underestimate your bacteria than to overestimate it now, before we actually get into having a look at the different sizes, because I've got a few different examples that I'm wanting to show you, woohoo! Um, I just want to remind you: from little things, big things grow. Okay, and I realise that you know that's an ad for a couple of different places, but it's a really awesome song too. Um, and what it talks about—not the song, but what I'm meaning—is we often will buy little fish. Okay, little fish, little fish, little fish. But they will get bigger fish and bigger fish, especially if we're growing them 
for our food-based systems, okay? So we can buy the little fingerlings, the little babies, or they can, if you've got tilapia, then they can be reproducing in your tanks. Awesome. But remember, if you have your biofilter, or you get a whole heap of little fish, they're going to get bigger. Okay, so that's what we have to work out. So the, the ratio that I'm going to show you tells you how many, basically how many grams or pounds worth of fish you can have per amount of filtration. But I'm just wanting to remind you, when you have little fish, and you can hear my um, flood and drain kicking in little barrel system there, sorry. If you have little fish, then you can have lots and lots of little fish to get the plant growing, you know, get that ratio happening, but they will get bigger, which means as they get bigger, your filtration amount will increase if you've got the capacity. So you might end up having, say, one grow bed for a certain number of little baby fish, and as they get bigger, and as you get used to your system, you then add another grow bed. But all the time, needing to make sure how big your fish are versus how much wet media you have, so how much filtration you have within your aquaponic system. That's the ratio, okay? It's, you've got to know how much filtration you have to be able to identify how many fish or how much, how many grams worth of fish or how many pounds worth of fish I can actually have safely within that. So always underestimate it rather than overestimating. Okay, you always want to make sure you've got more filtration than needed, otherwise you're going to have problems. So, let's grab the measuring tape and have a look at a few examples. Alright, so we are over in my little barrel aquaponic system at the moment with my tape measure. And what we're wanting to know, so we can work out the, the amount of bacteria in here, we're wanting to know the width at the largest level, which is... 58 centimeters at my largest or you know, 23 centimeters and I know that my growth bed, bed is 30 centimeters or um, 12 inches so we have that information we'll be able to put that and I'll show you in just a sec the math, math, math behind that but it's important to recognize when we're talking about our filtration we're talking about the wet media so remember we often have, we should have, and hopefully you do, have a dry level of gravel. And then if we dig down, we come to the wet media. The bacteria is in the wet media. It's not in this dry gravel or clay that's on top. Okay? So we want to make sure that when we're doing our calculations, I've just said 30 centimetres for the height, but I know that the top 5 centimetres has dry clay in it. So I need to deduct that five centimeters so always keep in mind you have to know how much of the dry and how much is wet with your media okay we're in my bathtub now this is actually my quarantine bathtub and i'm lucky that in this particular bathtub it um it's it's flat fairly flat at the bottom and what we wanted to do we don't want to measure from the sides up here because there's no no media so if you've got this as your grow bed you're going to be having it from the inside only so we're measuring on the inside and this is a pretty much a straight way going down now up here i can actually see it starts to go down so i'll end up having more of the expanded clay over here and on this, on that side as well but remember i said before it's always best if we look at the minimum amount of bacteria that we'll have in our system so I'm going to base this on how my how it is. We want to try to measure this as a rectangle with the minimum amount. And to do that, we've got our measure. And we have there at 100 and 117 centimeters. And across here is oopsie on the inside is 50 centimeters and that is on again the inside here 33 centimeters so they're the dimensions that we're actually wanting to go with when we're measuring this i'm not measuring from the outside i'm working out what the smallest or the minimum amount of filtration in my bathtub will be and that is what I'm going for, anything extra is a bonus. OK, 
Okay, so let's have a look at what those measurements will actually mean. Remember also, every, every bathtub will be different, so you will need to measure your own. I'm simply showing you how to do it. And yeah, this is my little quarantine tub that I keep uh, up here, but at the moment I'm also in the process of pulling down everything there. Sweet, let's get on to the measurements. Now we get to the really fun part. We get to go through and work out the calculations so you can know how many fish you can have per system depending on your wet media. Okay, so we're going to go through and have a look at the IBCs, the barrels, bathtubs, and your own DIY type of grow bed, which is the bottom right hand corner here. These are all based on the measurements that I've taken for like my specific bathtub that I use or my specific grow bed or my specific barrel. But I'm going to show you the equations both in litres and in gallons on how, do you be able to, how you can convert it to your own. Okay, so let's get into it. This part's awesome. Okay, so your basic chop and flip system, but let's just think about the actual grow bed itself. So the part that's on top. To calculate this, we need to understand the, length, the height, the length and the width. So we've got the height here the length and the width, being able to show you with the arrows there. Now let's actually see what the calculations are. So we have the height, which is 30 centimetres, but remember we've got the dry five centimetres on top. If you don't have that five centimetres and you need to adjust your calculations here, because we're only interested in the wet media, so where the biological filtration is happening. So we've got the length, which is 120 centimetres, and the width, which is 100 centimetres. Basically, we're filling in the gaps and we then come up to 300,000 cubic centimetres, which is pretty awesome. But we need to find out the litre. So to convert that, we then divide it by 1,000. We have 300 litres of wet media. Awesome. But what does that mean, Candy? Very good question. Now we look at the ratio of the fish to wet media. So generally, the best rule of thumb is the 25 litres of wet media. Again, I stress wet media per 500 grams of fish. And with 300 litres of wet media, we have 25 litres per fish. That gives us 12 fish at 500 grams. That's pretty cool. Okay, so going to go have a look in gallons for those of you who are in a different side of the world. Again, so we're basing it on height, length and width. So the same arrows have popped up on your grow bed showing you that. And in this case, it's the, it's the, the height is 11.8 inches. Remembering to remove the two inches if that's what you've done for the dry media, the length, the width, and then we fill in the gaps. So 18,244 cubic inches, pretty cool. So to work that out, we have to divide the cubic inches into gallons, which we, div which we divide by 231 cubic inches. And that means we have 79 gallons per wet media. So again, we come through to work out the ratio of fish to wet media. In this case, it's 6.6 .6 gallons of wet media to one pound of fish. So 79 gallons of wet media divided by 6.6 .6 per fish gives us 12 fish at one pound, which is awesome. So it's the same information. It's just changing it from the centimetres to inches and litres to gallons. All right, the barrel aquaponics system. It's important to note here that our measurements and our calculations are completely different to what they are for all of the other more rectangular shaped grow beds. So we do want the values of the base, so the widest distance across and the height. But what we're needing to do is we actually need to have, actually I've just put up here, we've got that the base is 57, sorry, 58 centimetres here. What we're wanting is the radius, okay, which all you're doing is you have the number for the base and then you're dividing it by two, so that gives us 29 centimetres. I got that line was there. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the radius that we're wanting. But the easiest way of finding that is to take the measurements right across the base, which is 58 centimetres, and then dividing that by two. And then we have our height. Again, it's 30 centimetres minus the five centimetres of dry media. And this is our lovely equation that we're going to work with because we're working at volume um, on a round cylinder as opposed to something with straight lines it's a fair bit different so our volume equals pi times radius square, squared uh, times height there we go so putting it in a bit more English <laughs> um, pi 
times radius squared times height. And I, I, I have to be able to do that so I can get all my calculations right. So basically, we're then filling in the gaps here. And again, showing you, I'm just breaking it down step by step. So again, we've got volume equals pi. This time, in the brackets, we're getting rid of the, the squared component, just doing 29 times 29. Once we've got that bracket done, we can then move on to the rest of it, which is what we've done here. So now the equation is volume equals pi times 841 times 25. So the 841 is still our radius. We've just broken it down into the number value. So our value here is now the volume equals 21,025 times pi centimeters cubed. Yeah, cubed, yeah. Breaking that down again, so pi is 3.14 when we're shortening it down to <laughs> the two digits. And now we've got that volume back down to a reasonable value that we can kind of understand at 66,018 centimetres cubed. So now we're back to the point of once we have our cubic centimetres, we've got to convert that into litres. So we're dividing it by 1,000, which gives us these figures here which gives us 66 litres of wet media. And I know this is fairly accurate. This is a 200 litre drum and it's pretty much been cut into thirds. So I'm all for that being the right number. And I also did check that online. Uh, and then our ratio, again, it's the 25 litres of wet media to 500 grams of fish. And we're following through on the same information. Now, in this case, it comes up with 2.6 fish at 500 grams. Personally, I would actually go less fish but in a little barrel system, you don't want to have big fish. Okay, so you do just need to be mindful of the amount that you're putting in there. And remember, little fish will grow into big fish. So that's that's moving on. And we'll move on from the, in, from the barrel from litres into gallons now. Same process. So we're wanting the base height and the base and the height. And we're remembering we're wanting the radius that the sums in inches. So it's 23 inches is the base. We're wanting the radius of that, which is half the base, which is 11.5 inches. The height is 12 inches, minus in the 2 inches for your dry media. Again, we've got that lovely equation. And we just I've expanded it just to make it a bit easier for people who don't know math. And then it comes down to filling in the gaps and for following our order of operations, as my math teacher would have said all those years ago. Bring it down. So... We now have 1,256 and, and change um, times pi cubic centimetres. And then we break that down again, getting rid of it, the pi aspect. And that gives it. Whoops, I'm saying that in centimetres. That should be in inches. I'll correct that. Um, so this is inches. I do apologise, but I'm saying centimetres up in the top two there. Um, Okay, so that gives us 3,945 cubic inches, and we needed to divide the inches into gallons, which we divide by 231, which is this equation here, which is 17 gallons of wet media. Okay, uh, and then we're following through to get work out how many pounds of fish per gallons of wet media. We've got 17 gallons of wet media. Dividing it by 6.6 .6 gallons per fish is what we recommend. Gives us 2.5 fish. And the numbers are slightly different purely because in the converting of inches to centimetres and centimetres to inches, and I have been rounding as opposed to being really, really um, down to the tenth decimal point. Okay, so remembering again your bathtub, which is awesome, but they are always different. So this is actually my quarantine bathtub. Um, that I use, and that's cool. But we're wanting to still measure the height, the length, and the width. So this is taking us back. So we've got the height, and this is the area that there's only going to be wet media in. So we're not going from the outsides of the tub or anything like that. We're going from the insides at the smallest area. So it's better to underestimate the amount of filtration than overestimate. So we've got here, we're back to the litres. So we're doing centimetres, uh, 37, sorry, 35. <laughs> Start again. 33 centimetres minus the 5 centimetres. Oh, I feel like I should break into a silly dance here. Silly dance here. Silly dance here. <laughs> okay. Um, the length is 117 centimetres. The width is 50 centimetres. 
filling that in. The equation gives us 163,800 cubic centimetres. I love those big numbers. They get so confusing, don't they? Taste. We convert the centimetres into litres by dividing it by 1,000, which gives us 163 litres of wet media. Awesome. So now we're going to our general calculation of approximately 25 litres of wet media to 500 grams of fish. So we're looking here, which gives us 6.5 fish at 500 grams. I would always round down uh, to make sure that you've got more than enough filtration for what's needed. Okay, so we're going to go through that in gallons now, again following the same process, the height, the length, and the width. And we're going in, in inches, can the inches, <laughs> 13 inches minus the 2. We've got the length is 46 inches, and we've got the width is 19.6 inches. Filling in the gaps for the equation, 9,917 cubic inches. So to get that into gallons, we need to divide it by the 2.31, which gives us 43 gallons of wet media. 43 gallons of wet media on the wall, 43 gallons of wet media. Okay, it's a bit early in the morning for me to be doing math, so I'm doing it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so 6.6 .6 gallons per one pound of fish. And we've got the 43 gallons. I'm about to break in the song again. 43 gallons of wet media dividing by the 6.6 .6 gallons per fish gives us 6.6 .6 fish at one pound. Okay, so I'd always round down on that one. Measuring, so this is my DIY grow beds. This is one that I made. I fiberglassed that. So this is when we wanted to create our own, which is awesome. We still have to go by the same premise of the height, the length, and the width. So in my case, it's 30 centimetres high minus the 5 centimetres for dry media. The length is 2.4, 240 centimetres <laughs> and 120 centimetres wide. Filling in the gaps here. Okay, so that's 700 and 7,000, well, 72,000, 70, yeah, 72, 700, oh my God, I can't get that working right. You can see it on the screen there. Uh, but that's in the cubic centimetres. We need to divide that by 1,000 to get the litres. So that's 700 litres of wet media. Again, so looking at the ratio of fish per media, 25 litres of wet media to the 500 grams of fish. So I've got 700 litres, dividing it by 25 gives me 28.8 fish. Because it's 0.8, I would round that up because I know that, again, I'm personally underestimating everything. So I know that I'd be okay with 29 fish on that. Because thing I want to say here is you want to make sure that your fish have enough room to grow when they're in the tank at their full size. Okay, so that's one point I just want to make here. So let's have a quick look at gallons. We're following the same information that we've been doing all the way along, filling in the gaps with the height, length, and width. So just going in, in inches this time, in inches, in inches, and we've got the width there. So now we've got our lovely cubic inches result there, which is 43. 1,711 cubic inches. Okay, and I am dyslexic, so I did actually go through and double check all of my answers with um, with someone who is not dyslexic and incredibly smart. So, and, and a wizard math, I should give that her head, heads off, hats off to her. Good with math. Um, okay, so we're wanting to get that into gallons now. So 43,711 gallons divided by, sorry, cubic inches divided by. The 231 gives us 189 gallons of wet media. Still feeling like breaking into that song right now. Um, so the ratio 6.6 .6 gallons of wet media to one pound of fish. And that means, again, the math comes back saying 28.6 fish at one pound. Again, this is for my grow bed. All of this information is for my measurements that I have done with this. The IBC is a pretty standard formula because most people are cutting it at the 30 centimetre mark. All of the others, though, you do need to make sure that you are following and measuring what your own equations are and filling in the gaps. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions or comments, make sure you do leave them below and hit that subscribe button so you can find out when I've got more videos being posted. And don't forget to follow me on other social media because I do different lives on different social media on different days. So, again, thank you for watching. I really value and appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed it.